for that, so we prepare presentation in Croatian. So the text will be in Croatian, but I will try to speak in English. The title is Artificial Intelligence Yesterday and Today. And our main task was uh, to give a certain introduction to films uh, that will be broadcast for the first time on this festival, the films made by various artificial intelligent techniques. But again, the organizer decided that the uh, broadcasting of the films will be on Saturday at 5 o'clock in this room, and my introduction is today. So I will give a short introduction to all films because I watch all films and uh, I know and I will try to give you what kind of artificial intelligence was involved in making those films. Uh, my name is Darko Stepanichev. I'm professor at Faculty of Electrical Engineering Computer Science at the University of Split. And, uh, well, I'm teaching artificial intelligence for more than 30 years. My PhD thesis in the mid-80s was the first PhD thesis in Croatia on the computational intelligent topics, uh, more precisely about fuzzy logic and its application in techniques. And so, as I was, let's I say, the first one doing PhD in that topic, I started to teach artificial intelligence. And now for more than, since 80, more, almost 40 years, I'm teaching that subject. But I'm teaching the introduction to artificial intelligence that has not been changed since as I say, 90s. So the most important theoretic part in this field was done until the 90s, and after that, only the technology changed. And again, we are coming back with some small improvements, but later I will speak about that. So, uh, as a matter of fact, artificial intelligence is the uh, name usually used by people, but the right name has to be intelligent technologies or uh, sometimes called alpha intelligence. So alpha intelligence includes not only artificial intelligence, but other intelligent technologies like computational intelligence, distributed intelligence, which are also quite popular today. As a matter of fact, the most film that will be shown on Saturday are made by deep learning neural networks. And these networks do not belong to artificial intelligence, they belong to computational intelligence. But as a matter of fact, we could all that intelligent technologies. And intelligent technologies are today part of our everyday life. And that's the reason why they're also slowly entering in this art society, and especially in this movie industry, and I will show you later what is going on in that field. What is artificial intelligence? Well, may, maybe the most, there are a lot of definitions, but for me the, the most, one simple definition quite well explain what artificial intelligence intend to do. It's uh, the way how we can uh, make a machine using quite unusual and complex computational procedure to solve the problems which are capable to solve today only by humans. We call these problems complex problems, and these complex problems are not so easy, cannot be solved by, this, by the mathematics itself. We have to apply some other computational techniques which were developed through artificial intelligence research in this, light, this last 40, 50 years. What kind of topics uh, dealing uh, so this intelligent technology. Typical example of these uh, uh, topics are uh, image understanding. So in some of these films, some image understanding algorithms were used in making films. Then uh, it's also is a speech understanding. So speech understanding is second quite important topic, which could not be easily solved by simple mathematics. You need methods of artificial intelligence. For example, a summarize of text is why one, for us, it's not so complicated. We do that all the time during our 
our school, so we read a book and then write an essay of two pages about that book. But that topic is today even quite complicated, even for more sophisticated artificial intelligence systems. And uh, last but not least, there are a lot of examples, but I just want to take a few quite important of them, is uh, automatic movement around the space, roads, sea, air, and so on. And so these topics are quite important today, and you will see tomorrow we can expect even more things like that. So all these tasks are complex tasks, and they could not be easily solved by simple mathematic rules and simple mathematic formulas. We must apply completely another techniques based on another methods. One of them is, for example, search, quite important topic in artificial intelligence. Let us show you some examples of these topics. This is quite simple topic. Uh, the text is in Croatian, but the words are not as they are written usually. The letters are changed. But for our intelligence, it is quite easy to read this text. At the beginning, there is a little bit problems. Yeah, but after that, ja ne mogu vjerovati da u stvari mogu razumjeti što sam čitao. We can read it quite easily. So our brain, using this non-mathematics method, can solve this problem quite easily. For artificial intelligence, this is also a quite simple problem. It's not a complicated task. Another typical example is uh, solving the labyrinth. So solving the labyrinth also cannot be solved by simple mathematics, but it could be solved, and this is one typical uh, exercise uh, problem that we used in our teaching education because solving the labyrinth, the maze, uh, you can apply a lot of algorithms from artificial intelligence in these topics, in, the, in this topic. And on the faculty of our educational science a couple of years ago was one PhD thesis uh, really dedicated to solving a maze with a quite uh, complex new algorithms. Another one is uh, playing complex games. So uh, chess is a complex big games. And this is example when Kasparov 30 years ago uh, when the uh, deep, uh, big, blue, big blue IBM computer beat Kasparov in these uh, chess topics. But uh, chess is not the most complicated one. A couple of years ago, uh, the word champion in Go play, so was beat by the computer. And the Go is uh, 10 times more complicated than chess. And they use quite new but well-known algorithms developed 40 years ago, but with the new technology, they use the word champion lose the game with the computer. Google car. Google automatic car, the drive in California. I, I'm not sure, I cannot check that, but I read somewhere that the Google car has passed the driving uh, test in California, and the Google car has a driving license for doing that. So it's completely automatic car, the drive stop, and uh, I think that till now they did not have quite a lot of, you know, these accidents, traffic accidents. But this later we will come again to this. Uh, when all this start, officially in 1946, in 1946 at the Dartmouth College in the United States, a group of 10 people uh, organized two months summer school. And they talk each other about topics uh, in, on which they were working in the last couple of years. And these topics were, for example, the theory of automata, neural networks, the research of intelligence itself. And these 10 guys who establish the new science are shown on this picture. Uh, one of them, the first one, John McCartney, uh, proposed, well, they are talking and after maybe one month of various uh, exchange and brainstorming, they said, okay, this is something new and we don't have, we cannot put that in any existing science. Let us find a new name for this science that is dealing with all these topics. And John McCarthy, the first one, proposed artificial intelligence. 
famous AI. Although a few of the other uh, researchers uh, uh, thought that maybe computational rationality is the better word that could explain what are they doing. But artificial intelligence was maybe quite nice for the newspapers and for the, you know, this media. And so they decided that in 1956, mm -hmm. there's this new science will be called artificial intelligence. And after that is a, <coughs> let us say, history. Like in uh, all other new science disciplines, at the beginning, the researchers thought that they could solve all very important problems with that new science discipline. And so that's the reason why they tried to tackle quite, quite demanding uh, problems at the beginning. But one of the software on which they were working was called the general problem solver. So they want to make a software that could solve all problems. Of course, later, a couple of years, maybe 10 years later, a lot of these problems that they want to solve were not solved with that technology in that time. And so they a little bit, uh, let, let us say, focus their research on not so big and challenging task. They said, let us solve one simple problem where a man, human, uh, behave better than today's machine. And after that, the history begins. So let us see. So this is uh, 1956 when the name artificial intelligence was introduced. Five, four years later, the first expert system called Dendral was introduced. It's interesting that Dendral published an article in a scientific journal, but not under his name. Uh, the people who were working on Dendral, Dendral discovered some new, let us say, chemical structure. And they wrote an article, the article was published in scientific journal, and after that they said, okay, that's not our discovery, that was discovery of our expert systems. After that, in 1956, machine learning techniques were introduced. Most of the films that will be shown on Saturday are made by these machine learning techniques. So you can see it, 1965 was beginning, but now the technology is uh, so, let us say, so well developed that they can do a lot of quite important things. In 1965, also the ELSA, the first virtual psychotherapy system was introduced and also the fuzzy logic, so the topics which is the most close to my research. 1975, medicine and other expert systems in medicine. And uh, after medicine, uh, for example, today all uh, medical doctors in America have the opportunity uh, to use the expert, medical expert system developed by their medical academy. So it's quite uh, well you know, developed uh, and very good uh, medical expert system, but the beginning was medicine. And 90, 90, uh, 1997, the IBM Deep Blue with Kasparov, and in 2011, IBM, another computer which is called Watson, win the quiz Jeopardy. So that was in 2011. In 2012, the Google Brain recognized the image of the cat. So that was the first image recognition techniques uh, uh, made, uh, done by something uh, in that time quite new that is called uh, deep neural networks. So deep neural networks recognized the, the cat. And soon after that, in 2040, another, uh, again, the Google brain uh, described the scene on the picture. So not only recognize the cat on the picture, but recognize all the objects of the picture and make the short description of that picture. And uh, Google, uh, Google buy some software which is also today used for this deep learning and deep mind things. And in uh, 2000, uh, 2016, the deep mind, this algorithm of the Google brain, uh, uh, which is called AlphaGo, win the word champion in plain go. And the last two years, you will see there are a lot of even more examples. Uh, that was the past, let us say. What is today? 
Today, artificial intelligence is industry. So it's a well-established industry with uh, quite a lot of money involved in that industry. Today, maybe we are not aware of that, but we are living surrounded by a lot of systems uh, whose main, let us say, brain is artificial intelligence brain, and we must, maybe we don't like that, but from my point of view, in the next 10, 20 years, we have really to adapt how to live with the systems, with various hardware or software systems based on the intelligent technology or various intelligent technology techniques. Which are these systems? For example, in a uh, couple of years ago, I think two years ago, Uber, the famous Uber, signed a contract with Volvo for 24,000 robotic taxi vehicles. So if you think that Uber is here so that a lot of these people who don't like to learn, who like, so they, they can drive Uber and earn some money, Uber is thinking just about you know, his income. And so either in the next five years, in the countries who will allow that, the Uber robotic cars will start to, to work instead of Uber with the human drivers as it is today, for example, in Croatia. But even more challenging thing is the shipping industry, On, not industry, but uh, shipping transport. So today, all big companies are really seriously working on the robotic ships. And this is some predictions for the 2080, so the last year. So until to 2025, with the first, let us say, uh, short sea vessels, with sail without any sailors across the Atlantic. So, yeah, that's that's very good. Thank thank you very much. Only that, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I will uh, comment later what will be the impacts of all these technologies. Amazon Go, the first shop that works without uh, any people on the cashier, so it's automatic, uh, automatic paying systems. What this means, Ivica knows that quite well. Introduction of all these technology will completely change the market, the human labor market. So a lot of different jobs will be lost, and the new jobs, especially engineering jobs, will be introduced because all these technical systems are not perfect. Of course, they will have some problems in working. Someone has to repair that and to put them how to work. So in the future, more engineering will be employed and less, for example, these people who, like a sailors, like, a, for example, these cashiers, and so on. Uh, this is some, let us say, quite strong tasks. But there are also quite simple tasks which are, we are with, with simple systems uh, with which we live together today, but we are not maybe aware of that. One is a, a software for a plagiat, I don't know English name, is a, what is the English? Copyright. Copyright checking. So copyright checking, today at all university, I think that even our ministry pay the license for using that system so that you can easily find these in you know, some thesis some parts are directly, you know, not copyright, it's uh, but plagiarizing, plagiarizing, you know, checking. And it is based on quite complicated artificial intelligence algorithm. In almost every bank, there is an expert system who will check uh, can they give you a credit or not. So expert system made the first decision in the, in the this especially big banks. Uh, online buying, you see a lot of this advertises that pop up and so on. They're also using quite complicated artificial intelligence algorithm to do that. Uh, intelligent uh, helpers like Alexa, Google Assistant, Microsoft Cortana. So they're also, they're not very clever, but you can at least, you can play with them. So once when I was in London, in my Airbnb, I, I rent apartment and uh, the boss said, well, we, I have Alexa. And finally, but I, we have a lot of problems with Alexa to switch on the coffee mm -hmm. machine. And 
thanks to God, we find the classic Oshir coffee machine and change it. So maybe Alexei is not so clever, but we are living today with it. Uh, uh, transformation of voice into text and text into voice. So that's also this automatic translate on all these languages, European unions, Google Translate and so on. I don't think that it, it will be quite difficult for us to live without Google Translate, especially when you want to translate something on some language that you don't know quite well. So these are all the systems that we are living, living every day with them. And that was the reason why at least the European Parliament uh, in the last year decide to form a task force group for ethic, uh, ethics, uh, ethic uh, guidelines. guidelines for artificial intelligence systems. And in this year, in, uh, in, in uh, April, these guidelines were published. And they precisely, it's not a big publication, it's about 20 pages, where they, you know, said how when you are projecting or using, designing or using artificial intelligence system, how it has to be. And there are three uh, more important uh, topics. The first one, it must follow all laws of all countries. So it cannot be against any law. The second one, it must follow all ethic norms, ethic well-established norms in civilization society. And the third topic, it must be robust, uh, robust for technical and social, from the technical and social perspective. So it must be built without uh, any errors so that it could work in whole, all his lifestyle without any error. This is maybe the more challenging task. But these ethic guidelines are now, let us say, officially accepted by European Union, and it will, it will have a, quite a lot of influence in this industry, especially if the products will be uh, on the market uh, in the European Union. Another quite important topic is that the technique is going much faster than the law, and then the government, you know, uh, government, uh, uh, various laws, for example, uh, maybe uh, last year, in, in one year ago, I was with the uh, with the uh, uh, promotion minister, minister helper, deputy, deputy, deputy minister, with deputy minister of law of Croatia, and I asked, uh, do you know that in uh, uh, 2025 Uber will have 24,000 robotic vehicles? Are you preparing in law for Croatia? So what will happen then? And you know that in an economy, also they are proposing something which is called the new socialism, let us say. So they said, if the Uber will work with the robotic vehicles, his uh, tax could not be any more 20%, because he will not employ anybody from this country. His tax has to be 80% if you want to work in Croatia. But of course, in Croatia, they're not preparing any law, because they don't know they will be here in charge or not in 2025. But in the uh, European Union, they are thinking about that. And they suggest to all countries to think what will be when this technology will really start to work on the huge scale. Now they are working on the small scale, but what will be then? Who will be responsible if this robotic car has an accident? Will it be the designer of the system, the producer of the system, the buyer of the system or the final, probably they will give to this customer to sign a contract that he is responsible for everything what will happen with that car. But that must be put in some, you know, laws in some uh, applied in all countries where the system will work. What will happen with these robotic boats in the middle of ocean? Who will be responsible for them? If they, maybe, probably, they will not, you know, collide with another ship because they are more secure than ordinary boats. But if something happens, some laws must be applied. And we still don't have these laws. I think that even not in America, they have not prepared for the, these systems they are coming. Well, but this was, let us say, a short introduction with some 
my remarks concerning general topic on intelligent technologies, but this is a film festival, of course. And my second part of my talks will be about one special artificial intelligence, which is called creative artificial intelligence. So it's artificial intelligence applied in a various uh, in design, in music, in art, in architecture, in animation, in film industry. So in all these, you know, uh, all these art, arts, uh, artificial intelligence today uh, has found its place. Maybe it's not so spectacular, but it has found its place. Uh, again, a little bit about history. This is a picture drawn by Arnold. Aron is the first system for, uh, for, for drawing various types of pictures done by the artificial intelligence methods. Uh, the guy on the right side, his name was Harold Cohen. Uh, he passed away in 2016, but all his life he worked at uh, uh, University of California, San Diego, working on Aaron. So he started in 1968. He was one of those pioneers in artificial intelligence, and his idea was to create a software who will draw the pictures, <coughs> drawings, various drawings, and that you will don't know what will come at the end. And the uh, drawing of Aaron at the beginning were quite simple, but after that he introduced Every year, so for more than, from 1965, 70, 80, 90, for more than 45 years, almost 50 years, he worked on this system. And interesting is that there is no gallery in the world who has not Aaron's picture. For example, there are two of them in Tate Gallery. And the Aaron has uh, the Harold exhibition, only Aaron exhibition, were in Stedelijk Museum in Amsterdam and San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. I have a lot of friends, artists in Split, and when I <coughs> had a, a special um, this presentation about Taran, and he said, okay, then I want a famous Split painter, and I asked him, uh, do you have a picture in Tate Gallery? Do you have any, uh, any exhibition in such big galleries like Taran had? He said, no, and I think I, you will not get because there are a lot of human artists in the world, and Aaron is one of you, you know, especially that uh, his author, uh, Harold Cohen, worked on the system for years and years. Aaron changed a lot of various devices. At the beginning, it was a simple turtle, a turtle robot with a pen drawing on the floor, but after that, he used uh, various, uh, at the end, the quite sophisticated robotic arm, who even took uh, the he used the, 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 these oil paints for drawing images and so on. So Aaron is quite interesting. A lot of knowledge about anatomy, about, uh, uh, about colors, about you know, the composition were introduced by various methods and algorithms. So that was beginning. That was beginning, but today artificial intelligence has found its place in a lot of various tasks, and I, my concentration was mostly on the film industry, on artificial intelligence and filmmaking. And I find one quite interesting uh, article about that, written last year, so maybe in this year there are some even new things, and then we will show some few interesting topics connected with the artificial intelligence and the film industry. So I will switch to Firefox. For folks, yeah, let us say for the, from the beginning. As a first example of this author, Dick Dallas, he said that it's uh, Apple Memories. So it's an autonomic system who creates uh, films from the short films on your mobile phone using, let us say, various not so simple algorithms. So that's the simple, the most simple system in Apple Memories. But after that, we have the first a trailer designed completely by artificial intelligence system. That famous Watson, IBM supercomputer, was fed with a, 
uh, trailers of more than 100 horror films. And after said that, he made the trailer for the film which is called Morgan. And maybe it's a short, just two minutes, but we can see how. So it, he, uh, Watson uh, did the role of uh, director of this film. So. It's your first birthday. You can see these are wildest expectations. Nice to meet you, Morgan. Nice to meet you, babe. So, no, no, no human director was involved in this, you know, editing and uh, directing of this trailer. It's just a trailer, but it's beginning. So we can maybe stop. Another even more, let us say, challenging task is writing the script. So there is a there is an artificial intelligence agent called Benjamin, also known as automatic script writer. So the complete script of this film, which is named Sun Spring, I try to translate with Google Translate Sun Spring, but there are no translation for Sun Spring, at least in Croatia. It's sun in the spring, let us say, but probably the new. But the film was, so the script was written by the, by the to accomplish this, Benjamin had feed thousands of scientific, uh, science, scientific, science fiction movies and TV scripts, such as Futurama, Star Trek, Stargate, The Fifth Element, Go Buster, and so on. So the complete film is made by the, well, the script was written by the Benjamin. It's also science um, fiction short film, but you can at least so. This is written song lyrics. In a future with mass unemployment, Young people are forced to sell blood. That's something I can do. You should see the boy and shut up. I was the one who was going to be 100 years old. I saw him again. The way you were sent to me. That was a big, honest idea. I am not a bright light. Well! I have to uh, go to the skull. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I, I don't know anything about any of this. So. Uh, anyway. There's no answer. We're going to see the money. Tell me that. Yeah, I was coming to that thing. You know, Lucy also. Brilliant. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. 
That's right. So, uh, what are you doing? I don't want to be honest with you. You don't have to be a doctor. No, I'm not sure. I don't know what you're talking about. I want to see you too. What do you mean? I'm sure you wouldn't even touch me. I don't know what you're talking about. It's all is completely constructed at the same time. <laughs> it's all about you to be true. You didn't even watch the movie with the rest of the base. I don't know. I don't care. I know. It's a consequence. Whatever you need to know about the presence of the story, I'm a little bit of a boy on the floor. <clears throat> I don't know. I need you to explain to me what you say.
he throws me out of this place. And then he says, I'm good at that. That's okay. The question for us is, can a computer... So, these are, let us say, quite uh, demanding tasks. So, like acting as a director or acting as a director writing script. But artificial intelligence also has a lot of applications in the, let us say, standard, as an assistant in the standard cinema, cinematography. And one is of them is, for example, this uh, Kira robot. Kira robot that allows to make a scenes that could not be done by the human. Last, but artificial intelligence can be used as an assistant. For example, this is rendering the scene, creating landscape, creating uh, using the machine learning algorithms. So you start with, the, for example, with the cloning behavior. This is quite a simple tree, but of course, <coughs> after rendering, they could be more complicated, more looking like a real life looking looking <coughs> scene, and. Uh, uh, last uh, is using artificial intelligence as a generator of content. In some of the films that I will be mentioned later, that will be uh, shown on Saturday, uh, some of these techniques were used. So, of course, uh, uh, this short uh, article was written in the uh, 2000, last year was written, and probably in this year there are uh, quite a lot of other examples how artificial intelligence could be used in the filmmaking industry. But at the end of this, my let us say, talk, I would like to give also these topics that short introduction to films that will be shown on Saturday. There are four films. So it's Artificial Intelligence the Split Film Festival. The first film, Intelligent, intelligent uh, uh, Choice, I don't know English title of this film, uh, was based on the machine learning. Uh, so um, I said previously that intelligent technologies, part of them are artificial intelligence itself. Another part is this computational intelligence, and computational intelligence uh, include systems which we call artificial neural networks, deep neural networks, deep learning, deep machine learning, and so on. In all these four films, these technologies are mostly used, especially these deep learning networks because they are free, available, and you can, with quite simple programming, 
do a lot of things with them. You just feed them with the content and learn them. So it's a learning machine, learning algorithms, and algorithm learn and then do something itself. In this uh, example, this is a documentary about an artificial intelligence system based on machine learning who will try to predict the future of the museum articles based on existing museum articles. He tried to predict what, how the museum will look in the future. And it's quite a documentary film and it's quite interesting, you will see that. Another film is also full lot of uh, intelligent technology were introduced in that film. And it started, it's Anna Riedler film, and it started with a, a Walt <coughs> Disney film from 1951. Film about nature, about bees, about everything, you know. But then the, uh, the, the story was changed. The film was the same, but algorithm for image understanding was used and uh, feed to another algorithm who was trained on the literature about female, about females in these loving stories. So completely another background. In this original documentary, they were talking about nature. But now they show that they was feed with the books, with the, with the only female heroes, and they were loving stories books. And after that, after this image recognition techniques, the system itself explain and make a story and uh, give narration to the film. So the film is in this visual part is original one, but you know this interpretation of the film and creation of the of the of the voice and of the uh, this uh, explanation what is going on in the film was made by the neural networks and these uh, deep learning networks and artificial intelligence method. Another film quite close to this uh, uh, content, to this script uh, uh, creation by artificial intelligence. This is the first time that the artist, uh, he was, as a matter of fact, engineer, Ross Godwin, was the guy who uh, designed that. And the documentary film was made by the Levis Rapkin about his, let us say, installation. Installation was that he put on the car uh, sensors, camera, GPS, uh, microphone, so that it has uh, uh, audio inputs, uh, visual inputs, and location inputs. And after that, the, again, the brain, the system learned on the, with the big American novels, with a lot of big American novels, uh, based on these uh, real-time inputs, uh, tried to write the road uh, uh, the road uh, Roman. Uh, no, well, the road, the road. Uh, the, but another idea, his idea was to write the longest novel story about traveling. So it's, uh, and he really create, you see this on this picture. So there are kilometers, there are meters and meters of the text created in real time. So the, let us say, brain, the memory was from famous American uh, novels. Mm -hmm. And the inputs were from the camera, from the microphone, and from the GPS locator. So it's, quite, it's also a documentary about his installation. And as uh, some film, the Google was involved, probably was gave money for doing that, you know. And the last film was also very interesting. It is completely created by, again, computational intelligence methods. Again, deep learning, again, deep neural network. The visual part of the film was created with, a lot of people said, is the best uh, network for creating of synthetic landscape. And the name is Generative Adversial Net Big Again. So it's used for creating uh, uh, with these uh, artificial synthetic landscapes. And the second part was a Google Music Transformer. So we gained the deep network for composing music. So this, in this film, the visual part and the music part was created by deep neural networks. And quite important is, and special emphasize, was on synchronization between the, the picture and the, 
and uh, of music. So, and task is almost about history of the earth and so on, what is going on on this. So, it's mostly natural landscape, but there are some landscape, this uh, human uh, made landscapes, city landscapes, and so on. So, these are these for the first time on the split festival. Films created by artificial intelligence will be presented, and I hope that in this, let us say, one hour talk, one school hour talk, I give you a short introduction to everything. Today, it, that's most important. Uh, of course, there are some new scientific topics and still a lot of PhD theses are prepared in this field. But today, intelligent technologies or alpha intelligence. So alpha intelligence is the real name used for all these technologies. Uh, be behind, uh, quite close to us. So a lot of systems are working, maybe we are not aware of that, but in the special big changing will be in the next 10 years. So in the next 10 years we can expect a lot of physical systems living with us. I don't speak about robotic, robotic is topics for itself, so especially in Japan, in Korea and so on, they have a problem with the elderly people because the people are living in the longer and the children usually don't have enough time. So it's not a problem. The most problem is solidarity. So the robotics are used as, a, let us say, friends. So in Korea you can buy a, you can buy friends for your dad or your granddad. And the interesting is that uh, in the morning he read all news and having in mind the, what topics are interest for these old people, he creates a summary of the news and start the day, do you know what happened today? So it's quite personal, you know, communication and so on. So probably in the future we can expect that also in Croatia or in countries from which we are coming. So thank you very much. Thank you. If you can, <laughs> if you can questions, I, if I know what is the answer, but I think it, films will be quite interesting. It's a pity that they have not planned the projection now, but it's okay then. You will have opportunity to come here on Saturday at 5 o'clock. Same place. This place? Yes, and the projections, yeah. Yes, not here, but on the other one. Ivica, do you have a comment? Ivica is also quite involved in these topics. He's an artist and engineer. So he has, let us say, not double degree, but double, double education. He has a PhD degree in computer science and artificial intelligence, but working all life in the field of design and art. So he's a quite, and uh, maybe say a few words about the study that we have organized. Here on, on your academy. Uh, okay, we have a round of. Uh, uh, this is live streaming. So, my, how many people are on the stream? You don't know. My computer Okay, we can start with the study in 2005. A kind of, it's not. It's not regularly joint degree, but it's a study on here academy to master degree where students can uh, do design connected with technology. So basically, most of the staff are connected with the staff, which is professor working on the artificial intelligence and machine learning. But basically, my comment and my discussion is always with the students. The biggest problem is uh, that most of the studies, not here in Croatia, but in the whole world, which is dealing with technology, doesn't include this kind of uh, ethical, sociological element because we, we all know that all technology, the technology is not neutral. Technology, there is always political background behind the technology and one of the, one of the biggest problems, it's, it's also in the schools uh, in, in Croatia and Europe, so in the whole world is that all these technical schools which is dealing with, uh, with technology, especially with new technology which is uh, uh, now much stronger than be be before, doesn't include any kind of discussion what is the background of technology, why technology is not neutral, and what is the politics of technology, which is something we always miss 
in, in the education, in, in the broad education today. Maybe there is something for discuss also connected with art because art is also important to uh, uh, my practice. It's 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 connected with speculative design or design fiction, which is dealing with the future scenarios, mostly based on the technology. But if it, if we talk with the technology, we cannot uh, not talk about all this broad economical, political, and and uh, and a societal and a societal uh, uh, backgrounds of this discussion. Uh, and uh, the power of uh, design and art is because it can raise discussion to think critically about what is going to be uh, uh, implications of the technology. Because most of the uh, most of the uh, uh, of the use of technology today is just application. So we have uh, artificial intelligence. Let's make uh, autonomous uh, car, for example. Not thinking about all this. Uh, implication of what is how is going to change our our uh, system a way of living not not on our micro level like like a person but also on this like high level so thinking about there is lots of discussion about how this uh, artificial intelligence is going to change like uh, economical system in the future uh, let's say there is also discussion that people will uh, do on uh, different jobs but there is no uh, there is no Proof and there is no enough enough uh, uh, research <coughs> how it's going to change like economical system in the future. What is going to be with the people who cannot uh, 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 who cannot adapt to this kind of new uh, economical and uh, and uh, uh, economical system? And that's I think that's that's the power of the artist here to open discussion, like always, you know, like, like from the history, always art was, was dealing with the technology from the beginning, uh, trying to be critical on the, te on, the te on the technology, try to be critical on the application of technology, try to think uh, uh, one step forward in the future, how it's going to change our life in good, but also in this, in this like, uh, bad manner. Bad manner. So probably this with this to be legal ethics and robust. The, quite a lot of people were involved here, maybe I think 60 various scientists from all fields, not only from technology fields, and so they prepared this 20-page document. It's free, of course, I mean, in Croatian also, in all languages, European, Europe languages, but talking with this, if it's a thought I, I, I uh, read an article from the in one of Germany newspapers, uh, they have also all, they are even more maybe adapted to such a system than in Croatia. But uh, in one moment they didn't know what to do because the guy opened bordel with the robotic uh, uh, dolls, and they don't know how to treat that. It's a rent of robotic dolls. It's just like renting the car and renting because they will not prepare for that. And that's this ethical issue. Because, you know, we are doing that, that kind of renting has its background. It's not like just renting a car. And we are not prepared. They were not prepared for that. But probably in the future they will. So that's another job that will be... That, that, that will disappear. Maybe that will be good. <laughs> you know, the good things, all these other jobs not. But we have really, from my point of view, this is also the most important. Uh, for the art, I don't think it's uh, no experiment. And Split Film Festival also like to follow all this experimental work. And probably maybe just because of money, they will try to employ virtual actors instead of real one and so on. But we forget one industry completely uh, who earn uh, quite a lot of money, much more than film industry and music industry together, and that's gaming industry. In gaming industry, there are, let us say, 20% of artificial intelligence. <clears throat> Five years ago, in one of our journal, IEEE Spectrum, there uh, was an article about where uh, most people who, uh, who are specialists in artificial intelligence employed. In more than 40% of them employed in gaming industry. 
because in gaming industry you have artificial intelligence on all levels. Algorithms of artificial intelligence are applied in all levels. So that's also quite, maybe it's, uh, I don't like game, games, I'm not a gamer, so that is passing close to me, but I know that it's also, you know, big industry, a lot of money is in that. The problem of artificial intelligence maybe could be that it uh, simplifies the human mind and feelings and uh, spread all around because they have a lot of money and uh, so it can change the, the way of thinking and uh, I don't know, just comment. Um, because, because, because it has a, a lot of, I, I hear, hear a lot, lot of impact on artificial intelligence in the field of art. Field of art is not field of industry. Uh, field of art is something that is uh, poetic. And uh, so if artificial intelligence centers in, in that uh, space of poetic and, and, uh, and change instead of man, we read the poetic of artificial intelligence. But what happens with man? And uh, <laughs> so this. Of it because uh, when we think of combustion engine, the, revo the revolution of combust combust combustion combustion engine. Right? What was the revolution of combustion engine? Is energy. And this is the revolution of dig digital. Maybe something with the energy of sun or something, but changed men, people, men, you know, the thinking. Uh, in a, in a, this technology that is. I think all artists are scared about Yeah, I don't, I don't think it, it will get to be scared about that. It, uh, there are, you know, in this technology there are three age principles. So it's called head, hand, and heart. So algorithms or artificial or intelligent technologies are head. This uh, robotics, you know, physical realization is head. And the third part, which is like let us say in the last 10 years, a real challenge is the heart. So, and that is called artificial feelings. Mm -hmm. So how to create that. And the first topic is quite well developed, here it's known that. And that's how to recognize feelings. So now it's quite easy to recognize your feelings by the, you know, image recognition techniques. Mm -hmm. Even it, it can create that, mimic that feeling on the artificial head, let us say. But this, you know, algorithm, because it's a, they are not algorithms, they are not mathematically based. But people are working on that. You know, artificial pheromones, artificial genes, so on, so on. A lot of research, that on research topic. Interesting is how uh, Cohen has explained uh, what he wanted to do with Darwin. And his story begins that there was a sailor who visited for the first time Australia and see the kangaroo, but he don't have a skill of drawing and he don't know how to draw a kangaroo. So when he was back in Europe, he find one good artist, Leonardo da Vinci, and he said to him, okay, I would like that you draw the animal that I saw in Australia. And then he tried to explain, how to explain to the artist how the kangaroo looks like so that he can draw the kangaroo. So that was the way, he was an artist. Cohen has not only engineer, he was also a painter. So he has, he know both things. And he starts to learn Aaron, that's how to explain Aaron, how to draw the human figure, you know. And during, and he was very happy because all his life, 50 years, he was doing only that. A little bit teaching and working on Aaron. So that was happy life. And he lived quite a lot. I wanted to say something. Like, um, my younger daughter, when she was five, she enjoyed a game with a small Mozart magic flute. Now she plays real violin because of games. So you don't know how it will go. Also, the problem is that kids now, because they are addicted to games and very seriously addicted, and they have other problems when they are out of games in some periods, they try to. Uh, they have problems to adjust in reality. So, and a lot of 
uh, parents allow the kids to play because they, they are like mm. unsafe and they're not and outside. They are completely out because especially in like the programming of the games, mental programming is like you change the characters, you're growing and in your uh, uh, age when you are uh, formatting, you are basically connected with formatting into virtual uh, third person also. We are losing it. We are the, the name that we are using for this, let us say, devices, is a time losing device. So I don't think so. But I think maybe it's because you can lose your time tool, there quite is some easily. Why. No, no, the but same is with the books. Books are also also with, time losing uh, device. Yes, and if you are re really are keen to whatever, but you cannot, you know, watch and movies. Anything is time losing. Watch movies for ten hours, twelve hours. It's, really? it's not so easy. But they can play for 10, 12 hours. What is not time you using? The life is time you time using. Okay. So the sun is still outside instead of sitting here in this dark room. It's better to go outside. Don't lose your time. <laughs> so the projection is...